Hi, we are Engineering Brothers and one second we have come out with our another problem. Quite frankly, this is our fourth problem for our FB analogy for our rotational system. You can sense that. But if you do follow our previous videos, you can get the sense that from our translational diagram. So this is our translational diagram. You can see that if you do apply the force on our mass body of M1, all those elements of M1, K1, F, K12 and M2 are all get disturbed just by applying that force. If, if you can feel that, if you do apply the force on that part of that body, all those elements are get disturbed by that force. And you can identify that so this is the diagram for our translational system so our methodology is quite simple because of lack of proper problems regarding our rotational system we have taken a very innovative approach to find out uh, these steps uh, to calculate our formulation for our rotational system so first i have got our translational system so our first step is quite simple we should convert that translational system into rotational system just by using our analogous concept if you don't get my point or if you don't understand uh, this point please do follow our previous videos regarding analogous concept of our uh, from translational to rotational system over there so first i have used our translational system so we should convert that translational system into our rotational system and we have used our nodal methodology or nodal method to form that diagram and after that i have got the translational system not the translational system first i have got the translational system just by using our analogous concept we have converted that translational system into rotational system we have got our rotational system just by using our nodal method and after that we have formed or we should have formed the differential equation from our fb chart or fb chart according to our analogous concept in between our electrical circuits and mechanical circuits so just by using our analogous concept we should have utilized our fb analogy in that side equation so first we have got our differential equation from our nodal analogy for our rotational system after looking at those equation you can do familiarize with uh, the help of this uh, chart you can convert that mechanical equivalent expressions in terms of our electrical expressions that is our fv analogy and by looking at that equation we should form the circuit diagram and that is the end of our explanation for our fv analogy so let us try start our proceeding as you can see that the force has applied at this point so the y1 should be connected with our ft so i should start with the formation of our translational diagram or translational system over here if i consider that the this is our node one and here the linear displacement for our translational system is y1 and quite frankly this is 2 and here the displacement is y2 and how to form that or how to form the nodal diagram this is very very simple the y1 that is connected with our m1 so i should include the m1 over here so this is our m1 or mass block m1 and k1 is connected over here so i should include the k1 which is nothing but the spring system for our given diagram or given translational system now the another dashboard system that has been shown or that has been included in our formation so i should include that as well so this is our uh, dashboard system and it has been symbolized as f and the force that is applied on our mass block m1 and because of that the linear displacement that is happened on our y1 so the force that should be connected over here so this is our ultimate force this is our applied force which we have termed as ft and in between our y1 and i2 y1 and i2 in between our two displacement or linear displacement factors 
there is another spring that is present which we have indicated as k12 so i should include that spring as well so this one is our k12 okay and at the 2 or at the node 2 we can see that the mass block m2 that is been present over here so this is our mass block m2 so i should include that mass block as well so this is our m2 okay so uh, this is very very simple i have used uh, the fast methodology first i should consider our translational system that is why i have shown you this diagram over here the force that is applied on our mass block m1 because of that force there is some certain deformation or certain displacement of all those elements in our given uh, diagram the k1 m1 f uh, k12 and m2 all are just getting displaced by that applied force of mt and i have used the nodal methodology nodal methodology nodal form to consider or to construct the whole translational system diagram over here in our next step we should interchange this translational system into rotational system that is the second part for our analogy but before i go into that i want to give you two minutes to note down after this one and after that i will do continue with our solution if you do follow our previous videos you can get my point that what am i referring to do over here so always do remember try to follow our classes from time zero to maximum time that will be better for you to understand each and every part of our given explanation that is the best thing for our engineering brother classes and you can feel that no one is doing these type of videos over here so what are you waiting for please do subscribe our channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel if you have any questions or if you have any queries regarding our explanation please let us know in the comment section we will try our level best to clear your concepts okay the time starts now
In our previous part, we have simply drawn our nodal diagram for our translational system and how to do that. I have already uh, described that in our previous part. Okay, so let us move on towards our next part. So our next stage is quite simple. We should convert this translational system into rotational system and how to do that. The methodology is very simple. For our translational system, we do know that if you do apply any sort of force on a, on that said body there is some linear displacement that is happened there but for our rotational system instead of applying that force we should have applied the torque on our given body so this force should be inverted into torque so i should change that in our factor over here so the our said force should be in terms of our torque because the in our rotational body the force the definition of our force is nothing but the applied torque so this has been converted uh, that has been interchanged in terms of torque and the linear displacement as y1 and y2 should be uh, transformed into our angular displacement so this y1 and y2 should be interchanged uh, with our factor of theta1 and theta2 so this one should be our theta1 and this one is our theta2 so this should be changed just like theta 1 and theta 2 and the one thing that is changing over here which is m1 and m2 the mass block uh, for that one that should be interchanged with our moment of inertia and that is been symbolized as our j1 and j2 so this one is our j1 and j2 this is our j and this is our j so these are our j1 and j2 and uh, the mass should be interchanged with our moment of inertia the linear displacement that is interchanged with our angular displacement theta 1 and theta 2 and the force that is interchanged with our applied torque and uh, this is being considered as our dashboard for our uh, for say for our um, translational system but for our rotational system uh, because of the presence for our viscous friction factor the viscous friction coefficient that has been symbolized as this one and this k1 and k12 as a, are our shaft thickness what is the shaft we do know that shaft is the common point and around that common point the rotating body that is been connected or that is placed uh, with that shaft body so the shaft stiffness that these are k1 k1 and k12 are uh, utilized over here and quite naturally this is our said rotational diagram over here so if you do miss my previous videos regarding analogous concept or how do i convert the translational system into rotational system please do follow that videos on that videos we have constructively given you all the part of the explanation right now i have successfully converted our given equation over here now if you do apply the dlmr principle on our nodal one what should be or what seems to be the equation the equation should be our applied torque applied torque plus resistive resistive torque that uh, addition of these two torque elements the applied torque plus resistive torque that is nothing but the zero now uh, if you do apply the torque i have got or if you do apply the d'alembert principle on our node on what seems to be the equation the equation should be applied torque which is is equal to rest of the all those torques are in the negative sign and summation of applied torque and resistive torque that should be our zero so what is the equation the equation is look like this one minus f d dt of our theta one because of this minus j one d2 theta 1 divided by dt2 because of this moment of inertia and for the shaft stiffness we do have minus k1 theta 1 which is equal to 0 so this is our equation 1 if you do apply the dlmr principle on our node 1 we do have applied torque and all these elements are our resistive torque so what is that the resistive torque elements are applied torque f d theta 1 divided by dt j1 d2 theta 1 divided by dt2 because of this and k1 theta 1 and i have missed another thing over here which is the common part that is the beauty of our classes or that is the beauty of our conceptual points of view i have considered this k1 
in terms of our factor the g1 over here a this one and i have missed one thing so if you have the clarity in your given concepts you will uh, do clarify your concepts and after simplified that clarification you will understand what is the point over here i have missed the common part of this k12 over here okay so let us do include that in our given equation as well so that is not the end of this equation the equation have another term which is the common part of k12 so what is that i should write it over here minus k12 which is the spring stiffness as i have taken one as the reference factor compared with our theta 2 so theta 1 should be greater so theta 1 minus theta 2 this is our equation so minus i should include this minus over here that actually avoids the confusion so minus k1 theta 1 after this continue with this minus k1 to theta 1 minus theta 2 which is absolutely the zero now i can say that this is our final given equation over here so how do i identify that i have identified that just by looking at this diagram so you no longer do require to remember our equation just clear your concepts and how to clear or clarify your concepts just by following our classes if you do follow our classes you can get this point that how do i consider this equation and how do i apply it our d alambert principle on our given equation so let us do that for the same equation for our note 2 if you do apply the d'alembert principle on our note 2 what what is the equation the equation is all those elements are our resistive element and there is not a torque element that has been applied on our angular displacement factor or in more specifically the node 2 over here so let us include that the resistive torque elements are minus j2 d2 theta 2 divided by dt2 because of the presence of the moment of inertia for j2 for the common part for this condition if i consider 2 as a reference factor compared with our theta 1 so the equation should look like minus k 1 to theta 2 minus theta 1 why because i have taken theta 2 as the reference for our current condition which is theta 2 minus theta 1 which is is equal to 0 so this is our equation 2 okay so in this part in this current part i have uh, transformed our translational system into rotational system and how do i do that uh, i have shown you but if you want to understand in a more deeper way please uh, do follow our previous classes so from that from this uh, nodal diagram i have formed uh, our two important differential equation just by applying the d alambert principle for our two nodal uh, two nodes uh, in a separate way and i have shown you this is our equation now if you do transfer this to minus take the common of this minus and if you do transfer that to the another side of our equation this equation will become plus okay so these two are our equations over here and in the next part i will like to play with these two equations just by using this chart so just wait for that i want to give you another two minutes to note down up to this one and after that i will do continue with our solution okay the time starts now
In our previous part, we have formed our two differential or two important or crucial differential equation just by analyzing this rotational diagram over here. Now I am going to utilize this chart for our FV analogy to change or to interchange or to alter these parameters in terms of our electrical parameters. That is the main objective for our FV analogy. So let us do that. So torque that is been replaced with our voltage ET. So this is our ET. I am going to start with our equation 1. So at the place of torque I should utilize that with our ET minus F is our resistance R. So R D DT of at the place of theta 1 I should replace that with our Q. So this one should be our Q1. Okay. Minus J1 is what? J1 is J1 that should be replaced with our inductor or inductive circuit which is L. So L1 D2 DT2 that the place of theta 1 I should replace that with our factor as Q1. So this one is our Q1 minus K1 means our 1 by C 1 by capacitor. So this one is 1 by C1 and at the place of Q1 I should replace that with our small Q1. Theta 1 should be replaced with our small Q1. Similarly uh, minus K1 2 means 1 by C that signifies that 1 C 1 2 and inside our bracket I do have theta 1 minus theta 2 and at the place of theta 1 I should replace that with our Q1 minus Q2 which is is equal to 0. So this is our equation 1. If I do utilize this chart to form our equation I should uh, follow that math methodology. So at this place of torque I should replace that with our voltage which is ET at the F I should replace that with our R so R D D T of Q1 at the position of a theta 1 I should replace that with our small Q I have uh, shown you over here and G1 is our L L1 D2 D T2 at the place of theta 1 I should replace that with our small Q1 K1 means 1 by C I do have 1 by C1 Q1 minus 1 by C12 K1 at the place of K12 I should replace that with the same procedure the same one you can fill that 1 1 by C1 Q1 minus K2 which is equal to 0. I will do the procedure for the equation 2 as well so without wasting any time J2 means our L2 D2 D T2 at the place of theta 2 I should replace that with our factor as our Q2. So this is our Q2 plus K12 means 1 divided by C12 according to the chart K means 1 by C and inside our bracket I do have theta2 minus theta1 means Q2 minus Q1 which is ultimately the 0. So this is our equation 2. So quite naturally just by using this chart I have formed the equivalent electrical differential equations just by interchanging our mechanical components into electrical components just by using this FV chart. So I have considered or I have converted uh, these mechanical equations or mechanical rotational mechanical differential equations into in terms of electrical differential equations you can see that. In the next part I will do identify or I am going to convert this equation in a more precise electrical equation. Why? Because the though the voltage is being present over here, but the current part is missing and this equation is not look like our electrical equation. Why? Because we do know that electrical equations should have consist of voltage and current elements are there. Though the voltage part is been present over here, but the current part is missing for our given equation. So in the next part, we should uh, utilize that concept uh, over here. I am going to give you another two minutes to note on after this one. And after that, with the help of some expression, I will do convert this electrical equation into another form. The time starts now.
in our previous step we have configured our electrical equation just by using this chart and we have transformed our differential equation in terms of our electrical equation so i no longer do require this upper nodal diagram for our rotational system so i just need to erase these two equations and uh, i am going to note down our differential equation because that will be utilized for our fi analogy as well but that is the next chap that is the next class we do have so i am going to note down this differential equation because this same differential equation will be utilized for our fi analogy which will be our next class so i am going to write down our equation torque minus f d theta 1 divided by dt minus j1 d2 theta 1 divided by dt2 we have got this one minus k1 theta 1 k1 theta 1 minus we do have minus k1 to theta 1 minus theta 2 which is equal to 0 so this is our differential equation 1 for the differential equation 2 i do have this equation which is j2 d2 theta 2 divided by dt2 plus k12 theta 2 minus theta 1 which seems to be our equation which is, is equal to 0. Now I have noted down these two equations for the sake of our next class which is our fi analogy. So I can erase these two equation. Oh, all we need we just do require to convert our said electrical equation in terms of voltage and current after that we can signify or we can configure our circuit diagram which will be our main destination point for our FV analogy. So we have got two relation according to our chart we do have theta means our relation Q. Now if you take the derivative with respect to time this factor we do have d theta by dt which means dq by dt and according to the definition for our electrical circuits we do know that dq by dt means our definition of our current small i and d theta by dt means our angular velocity which should be our omega okay. So this is our first relation and what seems to be the second relation the second relation is if I do utilize this relation dq by dt which is nothing but the small i if you take this relation we do have dq means i dt and if you take the integration on both sides of our relation we do have or integration of dq i do have integration of i dt integration of dq means our q and i do have small q means integration of i dt so these two relations are very very vital over here and i am going to utilize or put these two relation in our given equation one and two to reconsider or remodify our given electrical equations so first i should note down over here i am going to utilize this space the first relation is omega means our d theta d theta by dt which means according to the chart we do have dq by dt which is nothing but the small i so this is our first relation and i am going to make a bracket over here to avoid any sort of confusion so this is our first relation the second relation will be q which is nothing but integration of i dt so this is our second relation we do have okay now i can erase these two relation as i have noted down over here now with the help of these two relation i can reconsider these two electrical equations to have the final equation that should be our final equation so the equation seems to be look like this one the et the first equation et minus r 
dq by dt means i so dq1 divided by dt means i1 okay this one is done for the next one we have minus l1 d2 q1 divided by dt2 means dq by dt means i so we do have if you do put this relation dq by dt which is, is equal to i the relation seems to be di1 divided by dt okay moving on towards our next part of our equation i do have minus 1 by c1 q1 means integration of i dt and integration of i1 dt as we do have the q1 okay for the next one i do have minus 1 c12 and inside our bracket i should use small q1 mean integration of i dt so i1 dt similarly minus integration of small q2 means integration of i2 dt which is our relation and this which is is equal to zero so this is our final first equation if you utilize these two or if you do utilize these two relation and do put these two relations in our given equation one and two i do have this equation is our first equation so i want to refresh that i have got the et dq by dt means i and i have put that over here l1 l1 that is the same dq by dt means i so at the place of our dq by dt i have used di1 by dt just by putting that relation for the next part i do have 1 by c1 integration of i1 dt over here and i do have minus 1 by c1 to small q1 means integration of i dt which means i1 integration of i1 dt small q2 means minus of integration of i2 dt which is, is equal to zero okay so this is our first equation okay for our next equation what is the relation the relation is the same one the same procedure which is l2 at this place of q2 i should write it as or i should replace that dq by dt and which is which seems that the equation is di2 by dt okay plus i do have plus 1 by c12 and at the place of our q2 i should replace that with q means integration of i dt and inside our bracket i do have i do have small q2 means i dt so which signifies that i2 dt minus integration of i1 dt so this is our relation which is, is equal to zero and this is our relation to i have got the same procedure over here at the place of q dq by dt i have replaced that in our given equation as di2 by dt plus 1 by c2 c12 uh, at the place of q2 i have written that integration of i2 dt and you can clearly understand that i have utilized these two relation to remodify these two relation which uh, we have indicated as our one and two you can see that okay now we should take another break or another two minutes over here and how do i uh, consider these two relation to convert these two equation the uh, this is our equation one and this is our equation two in the next part we should form the circuit diagram accordingly okay the time starts now
In our previous step, we have reconfigured our two electrical equation in form of differential equation. And I have utilized these two relation to remodify our given equation. And after remodification, I have got these two equations are very, very vital. So let us consider or let us construct our circuit diagram over here, which will be very, very essential for our analogy over here. If you have any sort of problem regarding our explanation and if you have any doubts regarding our explanation, please let us know in the comment section. We will be try our level best to improve your concepts. So let us construct our circuit diagram. We do have the voltage source of ET. So first I will draw the voltage source, which is ET. Okay, along with that, I can see that the resistance or the resistor elements that is been connected over here. So I should include the resistance. So this is our R. Okay, the inductance is that is been present, of course. So I should include the inductance L1 and the capacitor of C1 that is also present. So this is our C1. And how do I form this? As you can see that the current through our resistor is R into I1. So that is the voltage drop across our resistor. That is why I have included the resistance. The voltage across our inductor is L1 D I1 divided by DT. And you can understand that the current is I1. So that is why I have included that in our same given loop. And the capacitor C1, 1 by C1 integration of I1 DT, that is the voltage drop across our capacitor. And through that, the current is the same, which is I1. Now, if you consider that here, the integration of I1 DT, integration of I2 DT, the difference of the current that is been present over here, and the capacitor that is placed in between these two current elements. That is why the capacitor that should be common part in between our two current elements of I1 and I2. So this is our C12. So through this loop, through this given loop, the current is quite frankly, the current is I1. And what is the preferred plus minus symbols or what is the polarity across this loop as the current is flowing in this way this is plus minus this is plus minus plus minus plus minus okay and this is been considered as our loop one okay and how do i configure that we have got the voltage et the resistance r uh, through this path you can understand that the current is flowing in this way so this is our current I1, okay? The inductor L1 that has been placed over here, the capacitor C1 that is also been placed over here. And through this path, you can understand that the current is I1 here also, the current is also I1. Through the capacitor also, the current is our I1. Now, why do I consider the C12 in between our I1 and I2? If I completed the configuration of this circuit diagram you will get that point over here now for the second part we do have a simple inductor or inductance which we have included as l2 as why because the current through this inductor is our i2 and the capacitor that is the common part in between our i1 and i2 that is already been driven or that has been included over here so this is our complete circuit diagram. Now in the in this loop, the current through this path is our I2. So the current is flowing in this way. The polarities, this is plus, this is minus. Now you can identify or you can understand that the capacitor that is placed in between our two current elements of I1 and I2, that is why the voltage drop across this C12 is as I have taken 2 as a reference for our, so this is our loop 2. 2 as our reference factor for this one, the current is I2 minus I1. For this one, I have taken 1 as our reference. That is why the current is I1 minus I2. Now you can take the reverse path to 
prove or to say that whether the circuit is right or wrong if you take that if you do apply the KVL in our loop one you will ultimately get the first equation and if you do the same now if you do apply the KVL in the loop two as well you will get this is our second equation so you can do consider the equation first and after that you will check or design the circuit diagram and you can check or you can take the opposite path to consider that whether the circuit diagram is right or not so this is our fv analogy concept over here so this is our fv analogy fv analogy consideration over here if you have any doubts regarding our explanation please let us know in the comment section we will be trying to help you and we will try to consider all this uh, all this as as per your convenience and if you have any queries regarding our explanation please let us know we will try our level best to improve your concepts okay that's it goodbye If you like my video, so what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe my channel.
hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned to the channel thank you and goodbye